All right, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about level design tips and things to bring you to the next level of game design. Most of these things I didn't really come up with, they're just things that I've learned over time. But we're going to start, first of all, by showing you how I create most of my levels. So usually I'll just use a CSG box because CSGs are bad only when you're actually changing them at runtime because they actually can change at runtime. So let's say you've got a CSG box and then we want to add, let's say, a CSG cylinder inside of it. We're going to put a hole inside that box, change this operation to subtraction, and then we can see that hole in the box. That's what she said. If we were to move this hole around, it's going to change where the hole is on the box, right? And if we do this at runtime, that's a very, very bad idea. Essentially, what you're going to have is a lot of extra processing that you, you shouldn't need, right? Like every single frame is going to cut that hole back into that CSG box. Like you don't want that. I'm just going to move this hole and we're going to make it a bit bigger. So you see it's like kind of like a dip. Oh no, see it's moved as well. Uh, and now it's like a big ass hole. That's what I want for the level, okay? So CSG boxes are asshole. CSG boxes are great. Uh, and to be completely honest, most of Unaccessible, the, uh, this is the game that I released earlier this year in January. Uh, all of, and you can see it here, all of this was done with CSG boxes, right? So as long as everything's completely static, like it doesn't really matter as the level loads it has to create all of that geometry right but it only has to do it one time so you can get away with doing stuff with csg boxes don't be afraid to use them basically and another cool thing that you can do in godot is after you've created your csg uh whatever you can go export as a gltf 2.0 scene and we can actually then go and open that in blend blender so we're going to need to delete all of that crap and hit A and then we're going to import it through the import. So GOTF, yeah, that one there. And there we go. That's our level. And then, you know, do some actual real changes to your uh, geometry, you know, things that you couldn't do inside. And then you can export from Blender and then re-import that back into Godot. Funke. Second tip, I guess, will be about like environment. Uh, what I like to do is you just go here, click that, and then we click that, and then we'll grab both of those things there, reparent to a new node. I just choose a regular node, and then I hit F2 to rename. We'll call it environment. Now, the, the good thing about a node is it doesn't have any 2D or 3D transformation. So next, we're going to get stylized sky because I really like that. If you're doing like kind of low poly stuff, but you want like uh, your skies and stuff like that to look a lot better than just the default environment uh, You go and grab that so shout outs to whoever did that good Tebo. This is great What we can do there is go to the world environment and now we actually want to add that sky environment So we've copied that script and then we want to go over to sky and Click sky and then we're going to click that off so we don't have a sky material because what we're actually going to do is click shader material and then go shader we'll go new shader uh, what do we call this? Like sky, sky one shader, I'll just call it. Sky one, jet two. And then we go in here, we paste, and then let's see the results that we get. Is actually change this light, cloud to light color, because that's actually the color or the light coming off the cloud. So that's our, essentially our environment. And that's what you get from like a sky shader, you know? So like your procedural sky or your, your physical sky, or whatever it's called. Just gonna add a camera and then we're gonna set it up like here, just so we've got something to look at. And then I'm just gonna run it. Cool, so we've got like a really dark environment, okay. So let's say you wanted your player to jump down into that hole. Uh, there's two very different ways to approach this, right? One is to just have a sign that says, go in this hole. But the other way to do it is a little bit more subtle, and that is by using light. So if we just chuck an Omni light, like down here, you know, like really, really bright or whatever, like coming out of the hole, you know, and then you look at that as like, something's down in that hole. Yeah, something might be down in that hole. So you could also chuck a sprite there. That's sort of like coming out of the hole to try and make your player want to go in that hole. But we might also change the color. If, for instance, I've got um, a, let's just chuck another CSG box in here. We'll make a little dugout. It's just a little, a little dugout that our player should 
also consider going into. Cool. So now we've got like a little dugout. And then obviously like the lighting from this is actually going to interfere with that. So we've got to turn on like shadows if we don't want the the uh, light to go there. But you're not even looking at the dugout. You can barely see it, right? But if you've instead got a light coming from inside the dugout, then are you going to go look at the hole or are you going to go look at the dugout? You know what I mean? Especially if we can't actually see it. So if we put the camera over here instead, zoom it in a little bit. Let me know in the comments if you're watching this video and you've been playing Ark Raiders lately because I am hopelessly addicted to that game. No! You see this, this you're going to go into the dugout. It's called following the light, just like human psychology or something, right? I'm not going to think about it too much. We're just going to put it into practice. So if I turn this down even more so we can like subtly see it, it's still got that effect. Now, if I move this to the hole, now what do you want to go do? Jump in the hole, you know, or go into the dugout. So another thing that we can do to accentuate that is by chucking objects around the hole too. So if we just want to chuck a little CSG box here, you know, so it actually is, is sort of like leading you over to the hole, like your mom. If we do that, and then we have a look at that it, you know we can see that there's something in there there's something to go and look at there's something interesting you're not even thinking about the dugout anymore now it gets a little bit confusing because like when you've got both lights maybe that means you want to go check out both those things or like you know you'll go and check this out and then you'll notice you know like you might make this uh, light a little bit more subtle you know so it doesn't go as far and then this one might want to do the same for maybe make it a little bit higher higher and then there we go. Like, so it, nighttime games are really, it's really easy to just lead the player around with like a light that just points them in the right direction. So another way that we can lead the player is with landmarks. How do you lead the player to go over here, like in this way? So if we've got landmarks set up, which direction do you think your player is going to go? Do you go left or do you go right? It's like, if this is what you're giving your players, then they're gonna go right, you know? There's no other way, you have to go right. It's like effortlessly guiding your players because it's baked into the level design itself. So you'll see, like once you know about this sort of stuff, like you'll start to see it a lot in video games that you play. So what I might do actually is create a little player real quick that we can walk around with because that would be really cool. I won't bore you, I'm just gonna three, two, one, boom. And now we've got a player controller. If you wanna learn how to make a player controllers like this, let me know in the comments. When we're talking about like landmarks, we're talking about like things in the distance, okay? We're leading the player to that landmark. Super duper easy. And then they're gonna be like, oh, cool. Bam, and then this is what we do. How do we get them in the hole? Next challenge. Okay, well, method one is the big red arrow, right? That just points them directly into the hole. They're gonna jump in that hole. Y you know they're gonna jump in that hole. Make this hole bigger. Move it over. Yep. Make sure that people know that when they jump in that hole, that's where they're supposed to go. Right? I don't like this method. This method is cheap and it's dirty, right? It's super cheap and it's super dirty, but it does lead the player in the right direction, right? So go for a run and then boom, in the hole. Yep go straight in the hole and then the player doesn't even look at the rest of how bad the rest of the level is so another method you could do is called framing where it's basically we set up the frame for you know where you're supposed to go you got to come up with like some silly ways to kind of frame it you know where it's not completely obvious but also it's like that's the way that you want to go, you know? We're, so we're, we're really giving our player as many hints as we possibly can <laughs> to go and jump in that hole as possible, right? So let's say you actually had options about where you could go. We could run around in any direction possible. You know, really, we're really going to try and sell this, right? Uh, but you can see the way that it's framed is like, it doesn't matter that you, your landmark in a uh, sense tells you to go that way. It's we're still going to go this way anyway to figure out what we have to do next to get that way. So that's framing, like some sort of like focus. We might have like a different colored light over there as well. We can sort of like play with the uh, player's expectations about what color light means what. So yellow means nothing. Uh, blue is where we have to get to. 
and then red is going to show us how to get to blue. So anyway, how are we going to get our player to run down this way? The easiest way, obviously, is to just copy a bunch of these, you know, following the light. It's like, here's where it really comes in handy, you know, where obviously if we've got a path that goes like this, then we know exactly where to go. But that's the whole point of doing it in the level design, like embedding this stuff in the level design. It's just giving you that psychological edge of showing the player where they need to be. So even if they're running down this way, they're still going to know. All right. And then if they run off track, it's, it's going to change in lighting and they're going to be like, oh, what is this place? It's, it's going to feel strange to them, right? I'm going to actually finish this level, I guess. And by that, I mean, we're going to try and hit the expectation the player is expecting. They can follow the light this way straight to the end. So, you know, very easy. Like, really not hard at all because they're going to come over here and they're going to be like, oh, where am I supposed to go, you know? And so, like, you give them that kind of guidance, you know, on where they're meant to go. And that's, like, a super duper easy way of leading your players. Because as simple as this looks, like, you're going to start a project and really not have any way or any indication of showing the player where to go. They're going to lock on, like, a, a ant. And if we want to increase that, we can change the attenuation, right? And then... Yeah, we can make it like really pronounced. So if we then go run through that, it's going to be really obvious where we're meant to go because it's lit up. So obviously we know, oh, is that our end goal? It's like, yeah, psychology tells us that that is our end goal. Now, when you get to a spot like this and they're still incredibly lost, this is where you could come up with like billboards or things like, uh, what's it called? Uh, yellow paint. You know, the yellow paint technique. And maybe that's something that we should talk about next. The goal is to get the player into the hole, right? But we're going to use yellow paint to do it. So what I mean by yellow paint is really something that you shouldn't go... Uh, 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 don't overuse it, okay? So if I want, I could change the color of this hole by basically just duplicating the cylinder itself. So we can kind of get this edge. This edge right here. Yeah, around the outside of it. And then we can give that a specific color. So we're going to make it contrasted. We don't have to specifically make it yellow. But yellow is a very neutral color. And that's probably why they chose it. Red means no, generally speaking. You know, mirror's edge aside, red means no. But when everything else is white, then red means yes. Yellow in the middle of nowhere is going to be incredibly obvious. You see that yellow? You go, oh, what's that over there? I mean... Fair enough, it's the only thing in the whole level one. So let's get to painting. I have a poo splat. Now what we want to do is we want to add decals, it's called. So we're going to go over to player so we can see where he is. All right. And then we go add a decal. And then we're going to choose, well, we're going to hit F to fly over to the decal itself. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to go to the albedo. And we're going to drag that big splat over to it. So now we've got, you know, blood obviously but what we can do is we can change that to a different color right and then it becomes yellow paint all right so we're going to use a poo splat instead and we're going to drag it over into a mission as well so look at that now we can see now we can really really see it right this looks like shit oh my god so then what we can do is we can just like decal all over the place you know in a kind of line and they're like not really perfect right now. Kind of lead the player towards where they're supposed to go. So you see that? It's like, well, which way are you going to go? Are you going to go this way? Probably not. You're going to go over here and you're going to go check this out. Boom. Probably seen this in video games where you're walking around and then you'll see like this weird projection happen to your player. And that's because, right, this sits on layer one. So if we want to go over to player, obviously what we're going to want to do is change it to two, right? So if we, if we turn it off, it turns off. We hit two, then it switches over to two, right? Oh, he's a little, a little naked. <laughs> so then if we go back over to main scene, right? This decal, the cull mask, is on every single layer. So this is also on layer one, 
right? But then there's what's called a cull mask. So if you turn off one, it's only going to stay on two. But because we've moved the player over to two, if we turn off two on cull mask, then it doesn't affect the player. But it will affect anything else that we've got. So for instance, I'm going to chuck down another CSG box. And then we're going to grab a couple of these decals. We're going to change the angle of them. So I'm going to go to the rotation with the R key, I think. And then I'm going to put that, you know, on a bit of an angle. So it like sits on the wall, right? But there you go. That's our yellow paint. This has been a tutorial. I don't know if it's been a great one. But I hope you guys have like learned something from it. Please subscribe. If you want the game files for this, I can go chuck it on Patreon, I suppose. This little, cool little like, you know, wizard controller. <laughs> I'll put that up there. And I'll give you the poo splat as well.